<clears throat> All right. Uh, calling to order the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board of School Directors special meeting Monday, March 8th, 2021, 6.30 p.m. by Google Meet. We are called to order at 6.31. Uh, adjustments to the agenda. I believe there are some. Jamie, do you have? Oh, no, I thought you said we had to set it. Running of annual meeting and budget vote. Yeah, no, we can. We just need the date and then we'll get that warning drafted up. But so that, to do that tonight. And the informational meeting will be part of that article or that. When we do that, that will be a separate. Yeah, warning that we'll get drafted up once we know the date and time you guys want. But tonight, I just need this warning for the. So we have no executive sessions or anything like that. Okay. No, I think we're good. All right, just some agenda. We do have a public comment in there. Excellent. Um, no notes to approve. Well, let's get right to it. Discussion items. 3.1 results of the dissolution of the Articles of Agreement results from. 3-2-2021. Um, and I'll start this off just by saying, which I'm sure you're going to echo me. Um, uh, we are still Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. That has not been dissolved yet, officially. Um, even though Stockbridge has made this vote, um, there is still a process which we will learn about in this part. We will learn about that process and what, where we are in that process and how far we have to go. So just, I, I've been hearing some people saying, you know, well, now we, we're all alone. And it's like, not yet. Our SUD still exists. And um, there is this process to go through. So, uh, Jamie, do you want to uh, sort of talk about what Donna Savage told you? Yeah, yeah sure. So do I... Um, a, can Ray put that up by any chance? I've sent it to everyone. Okay, via right. email. I don't know if Ray has that email or not. Your principals do, and the board does, I, and Tara does. Ray, do you have that email? It looks like he's looking for it. Um, yes. But I can start to walk you through it. Um, so I emailed Donna uh, Russo Savage, who of course had a lot to do with Act 46 um, in his council for the state of Vermont. Um, and just wanted to review what I understood the information to be in regards to after a disillusion vote was voted in the affirmative by a town. So first thing I asked was just to confirm that a reconsideration vote could occur within a 30 day window. And that the answer to that is correct, um, that a reconsideration petition can occur. Um, and so and it's my understanding that that may be underway. Um, I asked if, if said petition occurs, the, Ro the town of Rochester would, Rochester would wait until the next vote is certified. And she said that that is correct. So once the 30 day period for reconsideration closes, let's say now and a uh, petition didn't occur, then the secretary of state's office would then notify the town of Rochester select board um, that they would need to warn and hold a vote of the dissolution of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. Um, and so if a petition occurs, then of course, the Secretary of State's office isn't going to notify the town of Rochester um, until that, that next vote happens. Um, and then at that point, after the results of that, there would be a notification to the select board. And here's some of the information in this email right here. I wanted to clarify that if the said petition occurs, is there a timeline for the town of Rochester? Um, and this is one of those kind of issues, I think, with the law in general and statute that it does not establish a timeline um, for the vote to occur after the Secretary of State's office um, notifies the town of Rochester. Um, and Ray's highlighting that right there. No. And so, you know, that would be up to the town of Rochester select board to take up and warn that vote. Um, 
Number three, um, I wanted to know what happens if the vote in Rochester goes down to decouple from Stockbridge. What Which we means we, we, do not, we do not agree with breaking up the, the district. So yeah, sure. this is where um, I think we're going to need to get some additional guidance um, around munis municipal elections law. Um, it appears that per seven statute 17 VSA 2661 that it may require a year um, prior to a new vote being held in Stockbridge if that was to occur. But she also noted that the Stockbridge voters could then ask their representative and senators to introduce legislation by which the Vermont legislature could dissolve the unified district and reconstitute the two single town school districts. So that's an option as well. Um, if that was to happen, that the two towns don't agree to decouple the merger. And then finally, I kind of was looking for a timeline um, for us in regards to, you know, when this would all take effect. Um, I think the most likely date would be July 1st of 2022. Um, and that's what I suggested in my correspondence with her. Um, she's indicating that, of course, it could be after if this timeline gets drawn out. But I think, you know, right now, you know, I'm working under the premise that our SUD um, will continue to remain intact for the 21-22 school year. And based on the timeline, that if the voters in both towns decide to decouple, that the state board would approve the operation of, you know, standalone districts, Stockbridge and Rochester for July 1, 2022. Um, and the only way that would get delayed is, of course, if there is a petition for reconsideration and what the timeline around that happens to be. Um, I could see that, you know, the process just being delayed more. Um, and that's what she speaks to here in her response. Um, so I hope that's factual. And, you know, again, I double checked all of that with legal counsel, um, believe Donna Russo Savage. And so I hope that that's helpful for the board in regards to their discussion tonight. Jimmy, I do believe there's one step that might be missing. And that is if there is this approval point where the AOA, the Agency of Education, AOE, has to approve. Either well, it's, act it's actually the State Board of Education. State Board, yes, thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, so, okay. Uh, so that's, and that happens either way, whether um, uh, if, if, if Stockbridge's vote stands to leave our said and Rochester votes also to break up the union, the Board of Education has to, I just want to go over this again, make sure I, they have to still approve that. It's that is really a rubber stamp at this point. Act 46 is not off is off the books. And so my understanding by Donna Russo Savage is that they would approve it. OK, the t what would take time is agreements around debt, if there's any in mm -hmm. regards to Rochester Stockbridge as a district right now mm -hmm. and the need to just lay out a timeline for electing new school boards. The new school boards then would be charged for the future district budgets. So let's say this all took place, Ethan, and the state board approved it, and we're in next November, then each town would need to warn, elect new school district members for the standalone districts. And then those districts, those board members would get right to work ASAP on us building a budget for, mm -hmm. let's say, 22-23 school year. Now, if the vote stands in Stockbridge to decouple, but Rochester votes against it, and I just want to, you know, I know this might be right in front of us in these, what we're posting, but I just want to say, so then I believe the Board of Education, State Board, they don't have any approval over that. How does that get resolved? No, so if let's, that, that's what I said earlier. So if Stockbridge votes to decouple yeah. and Rochester votes to remain, in the merger that's where we need to get further clarity she said around municipal law and elections but okay. it's her understanding via statute per 17 
VSA and Ray just went gotcha. past okay. it, I think. Now I remember you talking about um, that. Mm -hmm. it would re that it could require an, a year's wait before Stockbridge could then warn a vote again. Mm -hmm. But she, you know, she said that we need to look into that more. Okay. Okay. Um, do we have uh, questions? I imagine there's going to be some public questions when we get the public comment. But um, uh, let's go through the board and see what we have. Um, Amy, why don't we start with you? Do you have any questions or comments on this? Um, you know, it's, it is very overwhelming um, trying to move forward here. Um, I, um, I guess I, I don't really have a comment at this time. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Justine? Yes. Um, my only comment is I'm really happy to see how many people are attending this meeting. Um, I think it's really important that the public is, is hearing it right from, from the meeting and not from in other ways. And I hope to see even more people at further meetings working on this. And so we can have everyone's voice be heard. Um, I've spent a lot of time since I started on the board working on the articles of agreement, trying to um, hopeful to, to uh, work out the kinks and in such a way that the decoupling would not be voted in. But um, here we are, and I'm 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 happy to see so many people out there, and I would like other people to to join as we move forward. Thank you. Um, let's go to Megan. Hi there. Um... Yeah, I'm definitely overwhelmed by the results. I'm, I guess I'm not surprised, but there's still a lot to take in, given how much uh, effort I feel like has been put in. I am very thankful for people attending the meeting tonight. Um, but to specific questions about uncoupling, I don't have them right now. I'm just hopeful um, that we can maybe work through this and find some common ground to move forward. I'm here to listen. Carl. Um. I wanted to uh, note that, if I recall correctly, um, when we were discussing uh, decoupling and that whole the the five year uh, clause that got put into the Articles of Agreement back with Steve Dale way back in the day, that when we asked him to describe, um, you know, what that process would look like, he did imply that if the if the 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 uh, the, the town that did not orig originally vote to decouple um, decided to remain in the union that the, that the, the um, uh, question could not be brought up uh, uh, for a year. So that, that, that's what I remember Steve implying. And of course, Steve, you know, <laughs> take, take it for what that is. Yeah, but yeah, but, yeah. but I, 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 I do recall that in support of, of what's going on. He did say also that, you know, the, that uh, we could uh, uh, either side could get the legislatures to uh, move districts around or, or uh, uh, short circuit the, uh, the, 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 the vote process. Um, in general, um, I echo uh, the, the, the sentiments that Amy and Justine have, ha have expressed. Um, I really um, am, you know, uh, disappointed that this is the way that uh, 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 Things seem to be going, but I agree with you, Ethan. That you know, we 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 are a unified district. I think, you know, again, we're not going to. Jamie's going to have to offer contracts to our teachers for next year before we even get to the to 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 the uh, reconsideration vote. So we'll definitely have you know teachers under contract. So really, I, I would concur that the earliest this, the, the 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 dissolution could go forward would be starting uh, July 1, twenty twenty two for the 22, 23 school year. Um, you know, so I think that it's important that we remember that, you know, for, for our kids, that's what a year and a half of, of the six or seven years we have them. That's a good portion of their, of their elementary education. And I think it's important that we, we work together because those kids aren't going to get that, you know, get, get a do over year or, or, or whatever. I think it's important that we, you know, we, work together and we get the best education for the kids in whichever configuration we're in till we're in a different configuration. And I'm glad 
to uh, you know, I, I was really pleased to, ha to to hear you just just say that from the jump. Thank you, Jenny. I really don't have anything to add. Um, I think those are all, um, you know, kind of sum up exactly what I was thinking and kind of agreeing um, with a number of people that are here. It looks like there's 34 people in attendance, and that's the highest that I remember writing that down into my notes that I can recall. So I think that that's um, great. I definitely encourage people to, um, I know they're long, but listen to the, the videos, um, people that aren't here. I definitely know that there's people, including parents that don't really know what's going on. So I definitely encourage people to um, ask questions. I know Lindy and Bonnie and Jamie have said this before, but you know, if anyone has questions um their doors are certainly open mm -hmm. um so i don't but i don't really have any questions on what jamie went through well my only comment would be to add um is that we have been working very hard there's been some significant issues between the two um i don't you know i can't know why people voted the way they did but in my heart, I feel like it might have been kind of a battleship heading in one direction toward disillusion. And here we were doing all these important things, I think, changing the way members were voted, working very hard to get rid of the high school building, um, really talking substantially about um, unifying the two campuses, the idea of one principle. All these things were very positive steps and it's just, and they were late. You know, they were late and couldn't affect the vote um, in time or the, just that the word of them couldn't change the momentum of the vote. Um, I hope there is a reconsideration vote personally. I, I, I would love to know. Maybe if it's just a confirmation, if it comes back, well, then OK, then we know for sure. Um, but it's, you know, it's um, it was disappointing. I think we've done so much to work to bring these two schools together and to really align the two campuses together. And to align them and to have a, we have a really good plan going forward, I feel like. And I'm not sure that the other alternative has as clear a plan. Um, and I just would, I would hope that people who go voting for disillusion would ask about that. What is the clear plan, including principals and everybody for, for educating your children in Stockbridge? Um, because we have a very good plan, our side going forward. And I really believe in it. And it's come out of a lot of consensus and a lot of hard work with a lot of different voices from both communities. Good. Jamie, do you have anything else to say or uh, principles? Well, I would just add to um, about this specific topic or just the fact that the articles of agreement um, both passed overwhelmingly in both towns, mm -hmm. the amendments. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to thank the committee that did all that work. Um, because clearly it met the needs and the desires of the constituents of our son. So I thought that that was positive. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, Lindy or Bonnie, do you have anything to add at this moment? Um, you know, I just would encourage folks, as if there's a reconsideration vote going forward, to really take the time to look to listen to the select board presentation that myself, Jamie and Bonnie and Ethan participated in as well as other board members. And I just wanna put this plug in. Um, I'm in the business of kids. Jamie says it very frequently. Bonnie says it really frequently. I firmly believe in what we're doing at RSUD is the best option for kiddos and the best success for kiddos. I'm not sure separate is not adult decisions with kid consequences. And it's something I said when I first interviewed for this position, I stand by it. I want to make sure our choices have kids successes. And I just encourage people, if you don't understand what the consequences could be, or you don't understand what the successes can be of being a unified district to please reach out and ask questions. And I would just piggyback Ethan on, on what Lindy said. If there are any questions, I think this is an extremely important topic. And I think, um, facts are just crucial. I think it is just um, super important that everyone really understand the implications. Um, I've learned that new phrase from Lindy. We need to be very, very careful that we're not necessarily making a decision, an adult decision that um, 
youngsters uh, have the consequences of. Carl. Um, Lindy actually uh, triggered a question for me. Um, she implied she, when she said, watch the, 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 the video from before, will there be another, um, explanatory meeting or, or, um, discussion meeting for a reconciliation vote? Is that required? I mean, I, I assume we could have a special meeting just to, to, to do a presentation, but is the select board going to be holding if, if we did have a reconsideration, uh, a vote, would there be another informational meeting tied to that? Do you know that, Jeremy? I, I don't know if the select board intends to do that, Carl. It doesn't mean our sub couldn't do an informational meeting if we'd like, and I think we should. Um, but my sense of working with the select board, if that question was called again, that they would they would hold one. I can't imagine that they wouldn't based on our experience, Ethan. I don't know how you feel, but I definitely. Oh, yeah. I would certainly show up um, any way we could. And, you know, it, it is it would be by Australian ballot again is my sense. So I think that they probably would be required to anyways, Carl, even if it's a reconsideration petition. That's what I thought, but I just wasn't sure. Amy. Uh, yeah, that also uh, triggered another logistics question for me. Um, if there is a reconsideration um, petition, how what is the time frame that the Stockbridge Select Board needs to get an, a the reconsideration vote out to the public? I, Amy, I would have to look that up in statute to see. Because I noticed I don't, you have, I don't have that time off the top of my head. Okay. Well, you know, you admitted that Rochester, it, there's not a specific time frame um, for, for their vote. And so I just was wondering if uh, it was the same for a reconsideration vote or if that did have a. a I'm assuming it does, but okay. I, I need to double check. Okay, thank you. I think when, when Royalton and Bethel did it, the vote had the reconsideration vote. Um, they had 30 days to get the petition in, and then the vote had to happen within 30 days of, uh, of that or 60 days of that. And it needs like a 30 day warning. I don't think you can have a, 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 a vote. You have to, for an Australian ballot, you have to warn it for 30 days, I believe. Yeah, well, that's fine. You know, well, obviously all, all you know, speculation at this point until we know that there is actually a, a, a ballot out, um, a ballot for reconsideration that has been approved and accepted. So um, at this point we are still, um, you know, facing a uh, waiting period. I think uh, 30 days would be something like April 2nd. Um, that would be the end of the period where within which a reconsideration could uh, could happen, a, a ballot or a um, petition could be accepted. Um, once that has passed, and if no, um, uh, if no vote or no petition is submitted, then, then we will meet again and, uh, uh, or actually we won't, uh, the select board, Rochester select board will meet and uh, that'll be the next step. So, you know, we're, we're gonna keep going. We got a, we got a budget to get past, um, we have a bulletin to create, uh, dates to set, um, things like that. So, okay, I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you, let's move on. And I'm, as I say, um, obviously when we get to public comment, um, we'll be looking forward to hearing um, what you all have to say. Uh, no, that's not where it is. There it is. All right, three, two. Our said annual mailer and budget information. So, uh, did you all get? This is what I had, Jenny, um, as the mo the last version. That this was the this was right before we went to the printer. So I believe it's. Um, complete. Um, I, I mean, looking through it, I know the color coordination, color coding, which, you know, we talked a lot about last time about, um, well, actually, let's figure out how do we want to, how do I want to do this today? How do we want to, what are, what we are just kind of need to decide who the point people are going to be um, mm -hmm. and what you need from the SU office. Uh, what you want from the principals and Tara, I don't know if they got, if the printers got back to you in regards to, we did ask for some quotes around color versus not. 
Um, she did get back to me without, she didn't give me any numbers. She just explained how they determine what the cost would be. And we would need to give her the format proof first. And then she could let us know because it depends on how the pages lay out. So once we had the document together, then we could get a quote on what it would cost to do all color, black and white, or if we only wanted to do certain pages of the print in color. And that was be with Spalding, who we used last time. Yes, great. I like that we're going local. Uh, Jenny. And Sarah, I was wondering if you remember how much it, how much it cost last year for the color version. Uh, yes, uh, there was sort of a, the whole thing total, everything was $4,000. And we got um, half of that paid by some nice people. Um, so the school ended up with the but, but I understood that it was basically, that was kind of the difference between color and, and, and non. Um, I personally looking at it again tonight, I feel like we could probably do a pretty good job with this with black and white. Um, the, you know, the, we color coded the headings and things like that, which is a really nice touch, but I, I don't know that we really need color all through. Our charts, you know, we had some nice pie charts that obviously don't, aren't going to read as clearly, and the tax rate. So what is possible maybe is we could move some stuff around so that we had a, maybe a center color page that had all our pie charts, and maybe tax charts, and then our outside cover um, just to give it a pop, but um, that would certainly save us some money. Um, uh, but, you know, it's going to take some organization. Um, you know, I don't know, Jenny, you know, are, are you up for, <laughs> are you up for a, a swan song here? Well, I think, I think if we did the same template as we did last year, I think that the process would go a lot quicker than um, we kind of put it together from scratch last year. Okay. I agree that we could do black and white and maybe have a, um, you know, like a color version online since, I mean, we have everything set up in color. We could do that. Good idea. I, th good I idea. think it would be considerably cheaper if we just did black and white. Um, you know, we could do a one page color like you mentioned. Um, I'm not sure how much, you know, if that would be harder to, to do that than you know, just do black and white and people could could look at the color version if they wanted to. I think that's I think that's an excellent idea to um, basically put put the, the full version online because um, it does it does look pretty good. You know, when you look at it online, at least from my version, um, clear color wise and pie pie charts and things like that. Um, one issue, too, is that we got um, uh, Edgeworks Creative in Randolph uh, did some of this. They basically helped in transferring uh, Excel budget sheets to Word, um, which just allowed a, a clearer and easier presentation. Um, so that, you know, how much that would cost or whether we can just plug into what we have here, you know, I, I don't know. Um, that's, that's, that would be a question for... Um, uh, Cindy, Cindy Ryan, Jenny, you got. If if we have, it seemed last year, and I think a lot of it had to do with you know since we were doing a lot of it from scratch. But if we have pages, you know, far enough ahead of time where we have the charts ready, I can help do pieces, you know, um, bringing in charts, not pasting the information, but pasting graphics that look decent into um, mm. PDFs. But um, I guess before I offer off that, I'd want to make sure that, you know, we have a good amount of time um, and that we have this stuff um, ready with enough time to be able to do that at the end. It seemed like we were really rushed at the end, but I think a lot of that was that we are starting from scratch and mm -hmm. did a lot of upfront work with getting things set up, which I don't think we'll need this time. Um, well, I, I, I could certainly look back and see what um, uh, what Edgeworks did charge. I don't think it was very much. I think it was in a hundred, you know, a hundred bucks or 200 bucks to do the transfer of the Excel to Word. I think it looks great. I think it looks much clearer, easier to understand. It also makes it much easier to annotate, annotate um, very quickly 
Um, and I think I would love I would love to have enough time for this time for uh, our principals to go through and mark up some more things that we missed or didn't get a chance to annotate last year. Um, I think what would be a good thing tonight was for us to go away with a timeline, um, work backwards. You know, when do we need this? I assume I'm just going to go up. I think it was like two weeks that they took to print it once we got it to them and then to the printer. And then it's 10 days. They need to have it 10 days before the vote. Right. So if you go 10 days before, then figure you send it out a week before that or maybe maybe not a full week before uh, somebody got a calendar in front of them and can sort of Lindy. Uh, I just would add a little bit more of a buffer time because feedback for mailing because feedback I've heard from Stockbridge community folks is if you have a PO box or it has to leave Stockbridge to get mailed back is it typically comes um, much closer to the vote than right. it does within the 10 day window. So do we feel like a, a, a week, a week ahead of the 10 is probably because it's got to be there 10 days before the vote, correct? So we put another week before that. Um, as I said, does anybody have a calendar? I, I, could... I have one. What's, yeah. Give me the day that you're looking at. So our vote's on May 2nd? May, okay. Is that right? May 4th. May 4th. May 4th. 4th. Okay, the Tuesday, May 4th. Okay, one week before that is April 27th. Okay, very writing this down. Well, oh, Jenny is. So what? What? What are we looking for? Ten days before that, or? Um. So ten days before uh, May fourth. Okay, that would be Friday, April twenty third. April twenty third, Friday. Okay, so then, so that's when they need to be in the hands. So okay. Let's go a week before that, they need to be mailed. The sixteenth, Friday, April sixteenth, mailed. So then uh, printer probably needs them. I think it, it might have only been 10 days, but let's, um, uh, let's go back. Whew. Look, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 days would be Friday the 2nd. Friday the 2nd. That sounds similar to last year, actually. Second, that's uh, two printers. Okay, I think that's. I think that that's safe. I wouldn't want to go. Conservative enough, yeah, and then we can always push it. Um, of course, Friday to printers is not as useful as Monday. They may, we might actually get an extra weekend because they weren't probably going to be able to do a whole lot with it on Friday. Right. Um, but uh, so why don't we just? Well, let's say Friday. That's good. And if we have another weekend to look at, so that's great. Uh, so we need to have it done by Friday. Just to the printers, Friday the second of April. So okay. I, I, yeah, go I ahead. I made Amy. a couple comments on the contents of it, and and I think that the um, areas that we talked about, um, educational decision making, I think is very important to include again. It just kind of said what the different levels, the federal level, the state level. I do yep. think that we could save money by doing black and white, but I really, I mean, like this chart that shows. Um, what where our budget really went to the percentage of it i think was very nice to see and i think that spending the money to do that page in color i don't think would would really i think it would be worth it well i mean what about this idea of sort of i mean it's a little a little awkward but if we crammed if we crammed all our color into one you know one fold over page four sides in the middle um you know then they put it together um, I think that's the thing is if you keep it and you just sort of use it as an appendix or it's on the outside and it's just an appendix in the back and you send people back for all your charts. And it's not as nice to have it right where the, you know, the, the graph is. But um, that's, that's. I think it'd be worth a conversation with the printer to find out if that's really going to make a big difference with the, the amount. Um, I also wanted to comment on. The quantity that we got last year, we, we will be able to get less this year um, because there were a number um, of the, uh, that were returned to the post office. Okay. Um, and also we are gonna save money with this year because we will not have to pay for our 
postal permit because it we paid for it in June of last year and it's valid for a year. So that'll save money. We also have a credit um, for the actual post for the um, for the bulk mailing as well. So we may not even have to, uh, or if it is, there'll be a very small amount that we'll have to pay for the bulk mailing. Okay. Um, and we we will need to get the I I if you want me to I can talk to um, the town of Stockbridge again to get the labels that will be necessary for um, for the voters who are not. Um, they do not receive their mail at the Stockbridge post office or, at, or through a rural route. There are some voters who receive their mail in like Woodstock and, and such. So. Yeah. Um, so going forward, obviously we need, um, you know, I'm, I don't know, as chairman, can I exempt myself from full of, from running this process like I did last year? I'd really like to, I mean, I'd love to be part of it, but I would love to not be in charge of it. Um, well, I think that's what handing some of it off to the SU is, will be very helpful. Uh, but somebody's got to make that decision of what we're handing off to them. Mm, okay. Um, uh, exactly. Um, I mean, I think putting the budgets, getting the budgets, I would say the, one of the, the hard, biggest jobs is getting these budgets um, put, into, um, put into word form. Uh, it's it's something that took a lot of tweaking. It's not just a simple transfer that we thought. Um, and this is, you know, if, if, if they could arrange for that for us, that would be a great thing. Jenny? Yeah, I, I don't think that we need to get the budget in word form. I think if we have, you know, if we start a budget at the top of, you know, page 35 or whatever, and we get, you know, something from Tara, and we can just do PDFs of the budget sheets, and then we can just paste those into the the words well, but, that we change to a PDF. Well, but this is, I mean, this is this is the big difference of how the thing, the the, the and and if this didn't make a difference, and that's fine with me. But everything, all different budgets are in the same format. That's one of the real looks of this of this. Um, is that we get we change because when we pasted them, there were all kinds of different bars and graphs and things like that, and it and it and it just never I never saw a version when I looked at some of the old ones. It didn't look fuzzy and, and messy. Um, but if so we I can would, get if we can get an Excel from Tara, I mean I do this all the time in reports. It shouldn't be an issue. All right. Well, if you want to take that on, um, that would be great. Um, as I say, it's the key. For me, it was one of the key elements of our of our, our our budget was how you know clean and easy to read it was, as opposed to, um, and as I say, it's really easy to annotate, uh, annotate, annotate, yeah, in uh, in Word. So um, if you can if you can prove to me anyway that you can do that same process with Excel or in a PDF, um, I'm 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 fine. But that's that's why I went with that last year is because I felt it was the best way to get it done. Yeah, I can work with Tara. And if something comes up, um, you know, some sort of red flag, I can reach out to you. But um, it's, I, I think it should be fine. As long as, like I said, you know, it starts. The only thing I can think of would be um, I would recommend on those pages that we don't have the same header. I think that's where you would get into an issue. Um, I guess I could create the same header in Excel, but um, so that it looks the same, but maybe, you know, we don't, we just have, you know, like a page number and um, something as, you know, some sort of footer in Excel. Um, well, and that work. Okay. I mean, I, I, what I'm, what I'm worried about just hearing that is, is just that, you know, we, we, because part of what you said, you know, we were sort of, is that we had to, this is why I called in um, Edgeworks, is that we had sort of tried pasting him in and to try and transfer him. And I remember it not being very successful last year, what we tried. Now, maybe I wasn't using you at that point, And this was just what I was trying to do. Um, but I would hate to get, I would hate to get two weeks out or two weeks down the road now and then suddenly realize, hey, we got to get this done. And then it's a rush job. And to me, I think the easiest would be to um, get the Excel from Tara, what we need, and then make the PDFs in Excel, 
it would be easiest if we don't have exactly the same, you know, header and footer as the rest of it, but I don't think people will really care. Um, and then just um, import that PDF into the, the other PDF. Okay, well, I, if you wanna if you wanna give this a go, um, uh, why don't you why don't you show um, when do you think you could sh show this to us or me or all of us? Yeah, probably all of us. Um, well, I think um, I have to get the the final spreadsheet from Tara. Um, I don't know exactly when. I'm thinking realistically, conservatively, this probably not get to it this weekend, but. Um, assuming that I have an Excel file. Jenny, we can talk offline and figure out exactly how you want me to send it over to you and which ones you want in Excel because we also have all the SU stuff that needs to go into, but you and I can definitely work through that together and get it to Yeah, you. I mean, it seems like we'll be using the same information from last year, just updating it. And Jenny, I'd be happy to help with whatever I could do to help gather or, or whatever. So uh, we can be a team. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So we'll, that's that's getting our hard data in there. Um, uh, will that also be the pie charts? I'd have to look and see what we did last time, but I think so. Okay. Well, as I said, I, this is the last version we we had. So uh, you know, you you've got that now. And I said, I sent it to everybody. I sent it to Tara and the principal. So everybody's got it. So, you know, um, we probably should have come up with a checklist um, of things we need. I know we did that last year. Principal's reports. Right. All the, all the different. Um, um, hey, um, Jamie, could you do me a favor? Sure. Uh, could you have our new special ed? I forget. Ron, is it? Um, yeah. Could you have him look at our special ed introduction and yep. see if he makes any... Um, annotations on that yep and he's done a report for other districts so I'm very happy to do that okay. thank you i have a question yeah is there a way going into the future that we um can you know i'm just kind of thinking down the road to help save money and, and save trees for those who don't want a full copy is there a way to ahead of time send out maybe a postcard that that says to people, if you want a full copy sent to you of the annual report, um, you know, return this postcard and we'll, we'll make sure to send a full report to you. Uh, and it's also available online. I'm just trying to think of ways in the future how we can um, save some printing, save some of the printing costs and save some trees. Yeah, no, I think so. Sorry, Carl, you've had your hand up for a bit. Um, Joe. I was actually, uh, Amy uh, uh, is on the exact same page I'm on. Some way to, I know we talked about this briefly last year, either, you know, maybe sending the bare minimum that the law requires us to mail that has just the numbers information and putting putting more of the the, the, the meat and the detail around, you know, the, 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 the part of education law, uh, you know, the municipal versus the state versus the federal, those those sorts of documents, putting that in a more robust, you know, online version and sending out here's the you know here's the basic facts if you want more go here or like amy said reach out to us and we'll send you this whole doc i'm not sure that we can get that in place for this year but it, it you know it was certainly I, I agree with amy trees and money are good things to keep uh to keep around i i hear you um my only thing is i know that annual reports are a big part of spalding's um work right now and um you know especially with things being thin um, I'd love to keep a local business going if we can, you know, uh, there's always a balance, always a balance. And I just think, you know, this is, you're right. This is for further. Discussion. I think we've got a plan. We're going forward. Um, Jenny, um, sort of leading Amy, supporting that with Tara's help, uh, getting these PDFs. I'd like to see what that looks like. And if we can get a similar look um, through the PDFs, then that's, and that's easier Then that's, that's great for me. Um, I'll, I'll sort of keep overlooking it. And um, I would say, yeah, actually, um, Tara, you could do me a favor with looking through some of our introductions to the budgets and just see if some of our things about what codes 
we used and all that is still accurate if anything's changed. Um, just if you could read, yeah, all the introductions and just see, or if there's anything you think, hey, that would be good to explain as well. Um, that would be very useful. Thank you. All right, are we, do we feel like, oh, Jenny, yep, go ahead. Can you send me, I don't, I have the PDF you sent. Can you send me the Word file too? Yep, yep. I can do that right now. Yeah, I love it, Davis. Point oh six oh five version F. I remember you and I going back and like last minute it was like A C D E F. Huh. Get it all done. Okay, that just went out. Good. Anything else on this? Justine? No? Megan? Thank you. No, thank you. Good. Uh, Amy and Carl, we've heard from you and Jenny. Okay. I think we're good. Let's, uh, let us move on to three, three warning of annual meeting and 2022 budget vote. Robert, um, if we can wait till, uh, um, public comment, that's the, unless you have a, um, often we, we let somebody who has an expert advice come in. But if you can't, don't mind waiting, we're going to be a public comment very soon. Um, so if you don't mind waiting till then, we'll, we'll get to your comment. Thank you. Um, so, Jamie, we have a warning. Yeah, I shared the warning with the board um, this evening. And it's updated based on the results um, oh, yeah. of the Articles of Agreement warnings. So um, really, we just need folks to review that and approve that warning. Um, it's pretty straightforward now. You adopted the budget a while back. And Ethan, Carl has his hand up. Yes, Carl. Um, we do need to, uh, you know, I, I think the warning has to be formally approved tonight since we're not going to really have another meeting before we uh, have to, 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 to publish it and, and, and post it. So we should make sure that the warning has under uh, uh, whatever the article is about uh, electing seats, that uh, it has a, a line to fill the seat that I'll be resigning effective the annual meeting for the, the two remaining years. Okay. Um... And I suppose we've talked about this, but I should, you know, it, so this would be the formal announcement that I'll be resigning come uh, uh, May 4th. Ray, can you grab uh, warning JLK edits? Not that one. What part am I looking for? I, I thought I had it side by side. No. The one I, uh, Carl emailed me about this and I sent one that had some edits in it under Article 8. It has Stockbridge voters to elect Stockbridge candidate one director for term ending in 2023. The subject line says JLK edits. I can send it again. I just no, didn't know. No, I have it. Do, do we need, well, let me look at this again. I'm just wondering if there is, do we need anything about the article that changed? We changed that on this warning. Ethan. Okay. It talks about the voters in each town electing. Oh, yeah, yeah, there, I didn't see the different town names. Thank you. Ray, you want me to just send it? I sent it to him. No, I've got it. I thought I had it already. 
prepared, but I must have done the same one twice. So it's going to take me just a second. Okay. So uh, just some things that we've got to note tonight. Um, we got to just identify the polling places. And uh, so we got to fill those in and then the board needs to decide what they want the polls to be open. Um, Isn't that to our town officers or town clerks to tell us? Well, no, I mean, we work in conjunction with them, but since they're not having an election, it's just yours. Always? Okay. It's really for you guys to warn and decide. Um, I don't know what the towns just did. Uh, I can't remember. Probably maybe safety system. 10 a.m. to 7, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. I believe it was 10 a.m. to 7. And I think I would warn the same locations that you had before. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, uh, Rochester will be at the high school. High school in Rochester and what in, in Stockbridge? Town clerk or the school? The town offices. Town yeah. office. Okay. So can we type that in? At the Rochester High School, Rochester, Vermont, COVID exam, we vote at the Stockbridge Town Offices. Stockbridge. Same information at the bottom. We can clean up the formatting for you. And we want to do 10 to 7 again? I mean, I guess we don't want to do early morning voting. Is that just too much to do seven to seven? We can, like I said, we can do whatever you decide. That's why I didn't. I don't know. Has anybody heard anything about a problem of starting at 10 and going till seven? Anybody on our board? Anybody have a problem at 10 to seven? Good. We'll keep it 10 to seven. And absentee ballots will be uh, requested uh, from the town clerk. We're not going to mail those or anything. We'll just do upon request. Just like you did the last vote. Mm -hmm. And again, this came right from Dina's office. Okay. I just added the one area under Article 8. And I based that off of the language we used through Dina's office when Justine, when we did the warning for her physician. So it was term ending in 2022 for her. So we use one director for term ending in 2023. Um, forgive me, I forget who's who's up for election in Rochester. I can't believe you can't remember that. Amy. Amy. Ah, very good. Okay. And you you are running again, right, Amy? We've talked about this. Yes. I and we'll just need uh, once you guys adopt this warning tonight. We'll uh, get additional information. I had put it out a while back, but I'll, re, I'll repost it around candidate consent forms. What does it mean to be on the board? Um, and I was gonna reach out there to two town clerks and see if they would allow me to post that um, information to their websites. So I think we're good to go if folks wanna. Entertain a motion to accept the um, Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District Annual Meeting warning as written. Somebody warn that, please. I move that we accept the uh, Stockbridge, uh, Ro uh, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District 21-22 uh, warning and budget vote as presented. We have a second. Second. Justine is seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Jenny, I didn't hear you. You in there? Aye. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, eyes have it. We have a warning. Good work. Right. So one more thing just to tack onto that. We, within 10 days, need to hold an informational meeting. Um, and so I'm within, looking- Sorry, 10 days before? May 4th, yep, yeah. within 10 days. What's, what we is need that to meeting? hold an informational meeting. So we just went over that earlier. Um, and so what we got to decide is whether or not you want to hold it, you know, 
on a weekend um, or an evening. Some districts have done two votes, just so you know. We've done one with, uh, sorry, two meetings. We've done one outside of the 10 days and then one within the 10 days because some folks were voting absentee ballot. So the district board decided to hold an informational meeting. Like, actually, I think we did 20 days out, but, um, you know, if we decide we'd be ready by, you know, 15 days out, we could hold one then and then hold one within the 10. That's totally up to you. I'm just looking for some dates and times so we can get that information so together. Again, 10 days out is the 23rd. Is that correct? That's the same. Yeah, That's so correct. Not, I, yeah, okay. So. What do you think, Amy? Well, I was thinking like the Monday or Tuesday, uh, the 26th or 27th, we wanted to do an evening. Um, I think that seems reasonable. Monday night, sounds good to me. April 26, 6 or 6.30? 6 uh, we've always been 6.30, actually. I sort of like, gives you, gives you time to have your evening cocktail. I, I'm sorry, terrible joke, <laughs> really terrible. Uh, April 26, 6.30, informational we, meeting. We will get to get, we'll get on that. And then we're going to do one. Board really? meeting then. R What's that, Ian? The R, the w R uh, Is that our yeah. full board meeting night? It's an executive today. board. All so right. We might have to do How about the 27th? I was going to say Tuesday the 27th would work. Yep. All right, that's good. Is that the only one we're going to do? No, you can do two if you'd like. What do you think? I think. Um, I'm just thinking dates. Hold on a sec. If there is a reconsider, well, I don't know. Right. Well, people. I don't know. I, I think personally. Um, um, uh, I think. Uh, I think the more information we get out there, the better. I really do. We could do a so Saturday on top of it, Ethan, or we could do that Monday night before. That's up, up to you guys. Uh, what do we think about a Saturday? Saturday midday? Is anybody really going to go in April? Everyone's going to want to be outside, I think. Um, I think evening's better myself for getting people. I think, yeah, how about the week before? I would well, you have to remember now you're pushing the, the, the uh, pamphlet to be in their hands earlier. Uh, so well, I, I was going to suggest the night before, so you could do. Oh, got you. Yes, thank you. Yes, Jamie. You could do you. Monday. Oh. The you could do Monday the third. Yep, I think that sounds great. I don't know how. Do you, I mean, just because I think it sounds great doesn't mean anything. Um, how do you? Um, how do you feel, Justine? What do you think about that? I think Monday the third seems very logical. People are going to be ready and looking to vote for the next day, um, and and it'll be right there, information, and then get. I think it's an. I think it's a good idea. Great, Megan. Is that right? Yeah, I I, could, I think that's a good idea to do it closer to the to the vote. Good. Um, so we're going to do we're going to do both. That's what we're talking about. Doing both as an informational meeting. Good, uh, Jenny. I'm good with that. Good, Carl. Yeah, that works for me. I think having uh, I mean it gives us the opportunity as well. If someone uh, says anything uh, uh, that requires follow up on the 27th, we can we can you know punt a response till the third rather than trying to uh, either equivocate or uh, uh, make something up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Good point. Excellent. Um, Amy, you're good with that? Yeah. Two, two meetings is good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Except me. Yes. I think it's a great idea. Good. Let's, um, let's, let's do that. Do right. we need a motion for that, Jamie? Or no, we just... We we'll just do it, right? Yeah, I what I will do is yeah, we'll do it, but I will I'll write it all up and we'll get it warned and get yeah. it out. Good. So look right. around the public so wait, if, if if we're warning this, don't we need a motion then? If you're gonna 
Yeah, because it is a meeting. You're right. Yeah, go ahead and, and motion and warn those two dates. Okay. Uh, I move we have informational meetings on uh, both. Uh, now I've lost my calendar. April 27th. Uh, both the uh, 27th of April and the 3rd of May, both at 6.30 p.m. Uh, online via Google Meets. So move. I second. Second. Amy, yeah. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I got it. All right. Thank you, Carl. These are the kind of things you just know. I really appreciate it. All right. I think you guys are on the public. All right. Let me get my list out here so I make sure I don't miss anybody. Two, two, two. So, public comment. I'll go down our uh, people who are on our video. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Here we go. I'm going to get my right pads. Thank you, right. Uh, we'll go on down and um, I'll do all the video names and then I'll go by phone numbers. Um, uh, this is comments. Um, if, if, if possible, we might, we'll see if we can answer you. Obviously, there's a lot of concern. Um, but we'll work our way through. Uh, good. So I'm going to start with uh, Beth. Daw uh, Robert Franks has his hand raised. He's the top of the list. So we'll go with you, Robert. Do you have a comment for the board? And you are from Rochester, I correct? Oh, is he on? I think he just put himself off. Um, then we'll wait for him to come back and we'll go to Beth Dolly. Do you have a comment for the board? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm just listening. Great. Thank you very much, Beth. All right, moving down to Carrie McDonald. Do you have a comment for the board? Yeah. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes, I can. It's a little quiet. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just trying to, I, I mean, I don't know if we will ever know this, um, but I, I'm trying to figure out what the driving force is behind the decouple vote in Stockbridge. Um, and if, you know, the board or anyone out there could um, provide more information about that. Um, you know, I'm not sure if it it's that um, Stockbridge residents feel that, you know, the board hasn't followed through on, you know, the goals and concerns of the community or, um, you know, if the residents feel like going alone is really going to allow them to do, do what they want with their school, um, in a way that they can't do, you know, can't achieve with Rochester, um, or if there's a lack of information, um, and, you know, res uh, the residents just don't, um, really understand what the repercussions of decoupling would be um or i guess is there just a large contingency of of people who want school choice ultimately um so i don't know if anyone has thoughts on that um i guess um uh, my feeling is if it's school choice then i think that it's never going to be a, a happy marriage so that makes it pretty tough um i do have you know concerns, big concerns about Rochester trying to maintain a local school. Um, did I mention I'm a Rochester resident um, and I have concerns about Rochester maintaining a local school, um, you know, by, w without a partner. Um, and while I, you know, I don't want to hold Stockbridge hostage, um, I also feel like decoupling is kind of like a step closer to losing our local elementary schools. Um, I mean, the budget implications are really bleak. Uh, what I've seen so far of our 2021 budget is that, you know, we're already at a bare bones budget. Um, we're cutting back FTEs, we're cutting programs that are really meaningful to kids like winter wellness and, and things like that that have always been part of who we are. Um, so, you know, the, the budget is already bare bones. I just worry about what 
our budget would look like if if we didn't have a partner in this. Um, um, I was going to say too uh, that I am aware that Ripton has reached out to us, um, and I wonder if if partnering with Rich with Ripton would sorry kids in the background would impact. Um, our, our SUD budget in a way that would make it more appealing to Stockbridge. Um, I mean, I don't know that that would be something that we would be doing for immediate, you know, immediate um, budget creation. But um, I do think that kind of regardless of the reconsideration vote, we should be in conversation with Ripton because um, it, it might make a merger more appealing with Stockbridge really. Um, I think that's it. Just a lot of comments. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Um, I will say just one bit of information that I've just, uh, in the most superficial, quick way, I reached out to a, a friend who's connected to the Ripton School, and they, while they have had a vote and have, you know, been separated from um, uh, their SU, they have a process to go through as well to be an independent district in order to be able to hire their own and things like that. So. Uh, while you know uh, we I, I have I have reached out as I've reached out to some of the other um, potential possibilities we're faced with this um, there's there's a process there's there are they're at the beginning of a process too a little probably a little bit farther along but um, uh, it, it's it's out there good um, charity oh well, hold on a sec charity if you don't mind Robert Franks is back on Robert would you try and uh, put your comments out again. I'm sorry, we lost you before. You did, Ethan. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Well, thank everyone for being here tonight. Um, I've been involved intimately with the uh, supervisory union and the school district of Vermont, of our, this district, since Mr. Puljasic and I don't even want to remember the last guy's name. But I will tell you, Mr. Jamie is doing a great job. So I would like everyone present tonight to think about the education of a child, the property taxes, 82% of property taxes in our valley go to the supervisory union. You really need to think about that because young uh, couples that are raising children are not going to choose Rochester or any of these school districts to educate their children. It's, and I would think that Patty Harvey might um, understand the the value of of re moving into Vermont and having the respect and the confidence of raising children in our school district is going to not cause them to purchase land. So with regards to the, the last um, 20 minutes of conversation, it's obvious that the um, school boards and the, um, well, let's call it the school boards, you're not a marketing company, you're not a communication company, and you need help. And we went on for 20 minutes about Excel files, spreadsheets, and all this stuff. Can everyone concentrate on the education of a child rather than this minutia? So with regards to the uh, Rochester and the Stockbridge disengagement, there's a major crevasse, fundamental crevasse. It's like a relationship in a marriage or let's call it that. There's a waste paper basket, there's a trash can, and then there's a dumpster. 
There's a reason why Rot or uh, Stockbridge voted no with regards to what is being put forth. There's a reason. So what I'm recommending to everyone here tonight present is that I think that the towns of Rochester and Stockbridge need a mediator to understand what Stockbridge is not happy with and what Rochester wants. It's, it's, a, it's a very serious thing because, you know, it's been eight years of me being involved in some, uh, school board meetings, watching the disaster that is taking place. And it's very sad to me to know that all this conversation and planning and laws and everything else has to do with the education of a child. And it makes me very sad to be on this tonight to uh, communicate my, my concerns. So I'm recommending to Jamie, to Ethan, to Amy, to Jamie, whoever, to just revisit a relationship with Stockbridge to say, what was in the wastebasket? What was in the trash can? What was in the dumpster? Because we're going down this path that I think is totally unnecessary. And I truly believe that if there was a mediator to reconcile the disparency between the two towns, we could have a relationship. I was at the a school board meeting when Stockbridge came to Rochester. They were gracious. They were invigorating. They were wonderful. So there's a there's a there's a problem in the connection between, let's call it the marriage, between these two towns, which is very saddening, because I don't think all the work we're doing, Jamie and everyone else has to go down this path of sorting through the dumpster. Let's just mediate it, have, an opera, have a, a, uh, a meeting, in-person meeting, social distance, and say, okay, what is the problem? But the most important thing is educating a child. And I'm not seeing education of a child with everything that we're dealing with tonight. I'm seeing Excel spreadsheets, copy, black and white. No, children don't need that. They just need to be educated. So I hope that maybe um, the, the school board um, can look at what Ripton did this past week and recluse themselves. I drive through that town every week. There were signs on everyone's lawns. Let us be free. Let us educate our children. Let us do, they won. And I understand that the supervisory union, um, thanks to Jamie, well, not, I shouldn't say thanks to Jamie. There's a good chance that, that the, super, the White River Supervisory Union might adopt the Ripton model that I think everyone should take into their hearts. Because, you know, I brought this up into a select board meeting in Bethel last week. There's a gigantic elephant in the room. 82% of property taxes in Vermont in our voting district is for the school. Is it a school or is it just a, what is it? So 82%- Robert, Robert I, I do know we have a lot of other people to get to. So I, I would ask you if you could to, to sum up, if you would. I appreciate your points. I don't want to shut you down, but I just, we do have a lot of other people to get to as well. So what to finish up? So 82% of property taxes goes to the school. 
50 to almost 60 percent of that 82 percent goes to the school that is why the town of bethel is is now re um uh, uh, assessing tax base because by the end of the day they have no money for their salt they have no money for their sand and they have to pay the check on june 15th so it's a wake-up call for everyone to understand that people cannot afford afford the machine so ethan you're you're asking me to finish in a in a uh, a quick minute because there's other people in line but yes. i've been through this it's been eight years of watching what happened i personally presented what was presented in on the rochester town park with regards to um information i shared from the select or the school boards to the herald and they dismissed it and it's very sad for me to understand and realize that i was right and i i'm not i don't i don't live on this earth or on this in this state to be right but they dismissed the information and the information um uh, ethan maybe you can help me it was Pajasic, and then it was, who was that guy's name? I don't remember, I'm afraid. I don't have a memory for that. Well, he was from New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. He was the Bruce head. Bruce Labs. Mr. Labs. Mm -hmm. He was from New Hampshire. He could care less about the tax rate in Vermont and the school system. He Very put good. his office, he put his office on Waterman Street, leased by uh, Lucky's, because Robert, it was Robert, Robert, you're getting off the track here. Okay, I think you made some good points, and I think you should leave it with that. I don't think we need to go into um, the pluses or minuses of, of the past superintendents. What, what's your final Wait. statement here? That we well, need to come together and work together. I, I truly believe that if Rochester could um, initiate a mediated meeting with the town of Stockbridge to go through the trash and understand why Stockbridge voted no. It surprised the town of Rochester. Rochester was celebrating because they thought they already won it. But at the end of the day, the vote was no. We don't want to be involved with Rochester. So that's the big question. Okay, good. So I-, I, I Are you all done? Are you, I'm sorry, I thought you were done. You assumed that. Well, I just, I, I thought you were finishing up. I'm sorry. I, I, again, I'll just say we have a lot of other people to hear from tonight. So um, we do limit to, to five minutes total. And, uh, um, and you've had a good say. Well, I would like you to, Ethan, uh, highlight the points that you thought were what I think should be brought to the select I board. I think and, your idea of a mediation is 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 a is, is a very wise one, and I think well, that I, I, we'll take into consideration. Well, it's again, it's like a marriage, and and um, I think that there could be a really good um, composition of communication delivered to Stockbridge to say, okay, this is what Stockbridge doesn't want, this is what Rochester wants and figure out what's in the dumpster. Gotcha. Good. Thank, Thank you, you, Ethan. Thank you, Robert. All right, moving on next to Charity, Charity Colton. Good evening, everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. Just a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, Amy and Carl have both mentioned the idea in different manners of finding a way to not send a mailer to those people that would pro possibly prefer a digital copy only. Um, I personally think that's a great idea, but I'm wondering if Carl had mentioned there's some legality around that. Rather than saying, send one to us, if, send me one because I want one, is there an option for people who are, I should re let me rephrase that. Is there a legal option for us to put it out there digitally in a way that if you only want a digital copy, please let our town clerks know and or whoever sends this out and get it that way. 
would that cover all the bases but still keep it legal? I don't know the answer to that, but I like their idea of, I mean, I know I personally would rather just have a digital copy and not have the extra stuff. I will keep a digital copy more handy in my computer than a booklet that I have to keep from my kids to draw on. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, um, Carrie mentioned reaching out, is there a way to get an idea of what people's views are. I've been really straightforward and honest and transparent about my opinions with all of this. Um, you know, I was part of the AOA committee. Um, I also was in favor of dissolving. Um, Carrie did mention a point that it is not my only reason for my decision, but it is a huge factor is that I don't think any of us are unaware that um, registrations are continuing to dwindle. And for me personally, and where I live, a huge factor is the idea of if our school closes, I do want school choice. It is not my only reason for my opinion, but it is a very big part of it. I live in an area where I have chosen to go in the direction of Rutland for a lot of stuff. And I've invested in being able to do that with my children once they get to the next stage of education. So for me, that's part of my, how I base my opinion, but there were 121 people total that opted to dissolve and without reaching out to all of them. And since that's not really known, you can't really know that. I think that's very hard to figure out. And in the past, there have been surveys that have been sent out to try to gauge that information, but I think they have been pre-biased, not, not intentionally, but maybe what's in someone's mind just wasn't on it as an option to check mark. Mm -hmm. I think without having an open forum and say, hey, we're, we want to have an open conversation about why people that want to dissolve are coming up with that decision, I don't know how else you would get that and not make people people feel uncomfortable about offering up why they're choosing that option. Mm -hmm. I've been open about mine since a while now. <laughs> I don't think anyone's unfamiliar with it. So that's why I'm not afraid to say it on here, but I don't think you're gonna find a lot of people of the 121 that are gonna be as open as I am. Thank you. Thank you, Charity. Um, down to Deb, Debbie Matthews. Uh, Rochester. Hi, Ethan. We're just here to listen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Debbie. Hallie Mendel, do you have a comment for the board? Um, not really. I'm not in favor of decoupling, and I gather that the board isn't really either. I can kind of tell by your faces and emotions. Um, so thank you guys for looking into this and, um, moving forward in whatever way we choose to move forward. No questions. Thank you. Janet Whitaker, do you have a comment for the board? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jess Arsenault, do you have a comment for the board? Nope, just listening. Thank you. Thank you. Joanne Mills, do you have a comment for the board? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. You still there? Oh, shoot. Can you hear me? No, I can hear you. Yep. Okay. Um, I have mixed feelings about this issue, um, as you know. And tonight I've had some conversations with people about a revote. And I saw on... Uh, Rochester Forum, the comment from someone that said that it was based on gossip, or maybe gossip wasn't the word, but um, that seems a little rough. Um, mm -hmm. Surrounding, let's see, rumor mill or Facebook information. And the thing is, on that same Facebook site, everyone hates it, but we were so lucky to have Jenny post the same information 
that was on the Stockbridge Town website. The information was put in the, the book, the nice book that everyone got for town meeting. Um, I'm, I'm just quite, I'm not quite sure why when a vote goes one way, people didn't get information. But hmm. when a vote goes another way, everyone's educated. Hmm. So I just would like to put that out there that um, the information was put out to as many people as possible. And I think there was information possibly even in the newspaper. So, um, you know, before the last information meeting, and I see <laughs> confused looks on people's faces on here, um, before the last information meeting, people were saying democracy. Democracy is a great thing, right? Do you remember hearing that or saying that? Who was it that said that? I think it might have been Carl. Democracy, democracy is a great thing. That was some. That was when you asked for board input in the very beginning of the meeting. So I just want you to remember that democracy is a great thing, and elected officials should act upon what the constituents have voted in. Mm -hmm. And that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, Joe, I, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Pimentel, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, I'm just here paying attention. So thank you all for everything you're doing. Uh, have a good night. Thank you, Joe. Okay, uh, Karen Rubin, do you have a comment for the board? I do not, Ethan. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Lori Novotny, do you have a comment for the board? I'll take that as a, as a no uh, from Lori. Um, Leslie Rogers, do you have a comment for the board? Yes. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, and sorry, are you, um, uh, I'm not familiar, are you Rochester, Stockbridge? Um, Stockbridge. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, my children are out of Stockbridge now, they're in Woodstock, and one is out of, in, um, in college now. Um, but I do have the means to speak to a lot of um, parents of students in Stockbridge, um, and some of the teachers as well. Um, and everybody keeps saying how wonderful the you know, transition has been, but every parent that I've spoken to has said that they don't feel that they've had any, um, that the transition, you know, using both schools has worked. They don't feel like Stockbridge is getting what um, they were promised. Um, the teachers have said they tried to um, work with the other, with Rochester, and it hasn't worked. Um, this is the reason why I voted to uncouple as well as tax implications in the future, um, especially if you're thinking about adding more and more towns, that means that we're gonna be paying more and more taxes of, if we keep adding more towns. Um, so when people ask why we wanna separate, um, quite frankly, things have not come to fruition that were promised. Um, and that's why I voted to uncouple. I think that answers a couple of questions um, that people had. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, Michaela Richardson, do you have a comment for the board? Hi, everyone. No, no comment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pat Harvey, do you have a, for Rochester, do you have a comment for the board? No, I just barely came into this meeting from the select board meeting, so I, I don't have any comment. I didn't hear anything yet. <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank you. Rob Gardner, do you have a comment for the board? Uh, no, I don't, but I thank you guys for your service, and I'm sorry about the vote. Got you. Tim Pratt, do you have a comment for the board? No, I don't. Thanks. Thank you, Tim. Um, now into phone numbers. Uh, 802 uh, star star 38. Um, star 6 to unmute if you have a comment for the board. Hey, Ethan, it's Keith over at Stockbridge. Hi, Keith. How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, a question for you. Um, there was quite a bit of conversation about the reconsideration vote. Mm -hmm. um, would I be incorrect in assuming that any reconsideration vote would take place after Rochester has their vote? 
No, according to what Jamie presented us, it actually is a, it's a, it's the first thing to happen after, if it, if it happens, if a petition is gathered and presented to the Raja of this Stockbridge Select Board, that would be the next thing to happen. But it has to happen within the 30 days window from when the vote took place, March 2nd to April 2nd, that petition has to happen. So that is the next thing. If, if April 2nd comes and there's no petition, um, then the next process is Rochester voting. Okay, so in other words, the voters of Stockbridge um, have to be second-guessed before their uh, initial vote is uh, accepted. Am I correct? No, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I'm, we're, we're, working, you know, we're working on the idea that we're going ahead um, as a unified district for this time. It's, it's just that the, the, the district hasn't been dissolved yet. The vote has happened. That vote has happened. Correct. Um, Still has to vote and um, and uh, to finish that process, but I wouldn't know. I mean, and maybe it sounds like it, and I could I could see how you would say, it might sound like we're taking it as a um, um, you know as a done deal that there's going to be a reconsideration vote, and that certainly is not true. Um, well, it certainly sounds as though the board is really uh, pushing on that uh, effort to push that forward, um, which yeah, I really I think is unfair. Uh, yeah. The second, the second point that I'd like to make, I've made that statement, so you know, you know how I feel. Mm -hmm. The second question, or um, that I have, is I'd like to poll the um, the board who rep who supposedly represents the Stockbridge uh, community as to whether or not they're going to take into consideration, in addition to the quality of education afforded to the children, if they're going to take into consideration the position of the Stockbridge community. And I'd like to hear from the three board members that represent Stockbridge as to whether or not they're going to, um, you know, take the position that, look, our residents have spoken, they have voted to dissolve the, the district, and whether or not they're going to back that position and follow through with that. Fair question. Um, do our Stockbridge board board members want to respond to that? Um, sure, I, I'll, I'll start. Um, first of all, um, reconsideration votes are, you know, it, it's part of Vermont statute. Um, it's, I believe, and, and uh, uh, Justine would probably know a little bit, a little bit more than me because she's the she's the legal person, but it's it's more of an artifact of, of, of town meeting to allow a decision that gets made to uh, be, be reconsidered by the community. So technically, the uh, voters of Stockbridge have not yet spoken. They'll have spoken when either, um, what is it, 5% of the electorate um, sign a reconsideration uh, uh, petition and that, that gets accepted and that vote gets held. And that, I don't, I, I, you, you cannot reconsider a reconsideration vote, so it's not an endless process. Um, but once that, once that has either been, uh, submitted and resolved or the, the, as Ethan points out, the window closes, um, then you can technically say that the, 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 the voters of, of, of Stockbridge have, have legitimately spoken. Um, I personally, I opposed, uh, the decoupling, uh, of vote. I think that, um, you know, as I said at the meeting, I think that, uh, our town is better for, for being part of a school. I think that they can't close the Stockbridge school without the support of the Stockbridge voters. That's in the articles of agreement. So I'm not as worried about losing, you know, that, that, that Rochester is going to take our school away. I'm more concerned that the legislature will do something around uh, uh, teacher ratios or something like that, uh, that, that will force, force our hand. But personally, I happen to believe that our town is better for having a school in it. All right, but Carl, um, Carl um, Keith, I, Keith, I, hold, hold your comment, I, please. Let's get through the rest of the board. No, but no, I want to address something that Carl had said, um, and that is a little disturbing. I understand Carl's personal view, which he's entitled to, but as a board member, he has to represent the Stockbridge community, not his personal view. Okay, fair enough. Um, Justine, do you have a comment? For Keith, yes, I do. Um, I um, I'm not I'm not surprised about the vote results. Um, the one reason that I want to say that I do support um, 
a reconsideration is that I did have several conversations with parents just prior to the vote. And there was a lot of confusion and they hadn't attended the informational meeting, which, you know, is what it is. But um, the several conversations I had were, were kind of um, insecure and confused and unsure how to vote. So um, I, I know certain positions of folks who have attended meetings regularly, but there I feel like there's a lot of voices that have not been heard or um, maybe folks haven't tuned in as much as they maybe wish they had before they were about to vote for this. So in hearing the voices of Stockbridge, I do believe that a reconsideration would make a clearer um, indicator as to what the the, the views of the, the voters want based on the conversations I had right before the vote. Okay, Justine, but you haven't answered, answered my question to the uh, Stockbridge electees. What's your intention? Will you back what the constituents of Stockbridge have voted for? I can't see any reason why I wouldn't. I, I just am unsure that the vote that has happened is based on everyone's true knowledge of the, the situation, based on okay. my conversation. So yes. Okay, so I have after- to support the Stockbridge voters, and that is my intention. But okay, so I support the reconsideration vote. that I've explained that already. Okay, so if there is a reconsideration vote and the vote still goes in favor of dissolution, you will look to dissolve the district. Am I clear in that or am I mistaken? Good question. That is a good question. <laughs> I have taken taken a position where I, I have spoken for voters. That's how I feel. That's why I wanted to join the school board because I wanted to help voices be heard. And okay. if I can feel like I'm accurately representing the voices, then yes. Okay, so you will decide to vote in favor of dissolution if that is how Stockbridge, even after a reconsideration vote, decides to go. I just wanna be clear and I want everybody on the record I want to know that my representatives from Stockbridge are representing Stockbridge. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Jenny, do you care to comment on Keith's? Yeah, I think in terms, I agree with Justine in terms of some confusion. Um, I spoke with one um, Stockbridge Central School, well, I guess not literally spoke but had a discussion with one Stockbridge parent today that um, honestly she really had no clue of of what is going on and um, I'm not going to point any fingers at anyone but this is a person that's very active in the school um, the PTO and she didn't have a clue of what was going on so I think there's definitely confusion out there um, in terms of um, on merging and how we would vote. I mean, I've already put out there that because um, I'm not running for another term, so I'm kind of a short timer here up in May. But um, you know, in terms of representing Stockbridge, it wasn't a slam dunk of merge versus unmerge. I think it was 45% to 55% approximately. So when we say we're representing Stockbridge, um, there's not. I guess I can't answer that question. There's not just one opinion out there. It's not 90% of Stockbridge that's saying to earn to unmerge. So um, it's kind of a complicated question, I think, because it's there's not just one opinion out there. And you know, each of us on the board, you know, we all have different opinions. And I think um, you know, this board, I think that you know, we've had some great discussions and we've had disagreements, and I think that that that's good. And um, I think Ethan said it before that, you know, that's how we get stuff done is just working through it. And that probably doesn't answer your question, but I think that's the best that I can answer it at this time. Well, Mike, I guess my question is very simple. It's just, I want to know that at the end of the day, whether it be 51% to 49% or 90% to 10%, I want to make sure that the representatives who represent me as a, a as a resident of Stockbridge 
will respect my vote and my fellow residents and back that up. That's all I'm asking. It doesn't matter whether it's 90-10 or 51-49. It, you have to represent the constituents. So I'm just asking and polling, I want to make sure that that's what your intentions are. It's a very simple question. It's either yes, I'm going to, you know, vote the way the constituents of Stockbridge want me to vote, or no, I'm going to, you know, listen to my own opinion and vote the way I want. That's all I want to know. Jenny, you have a further comment? No, I think that's... Um, I had a comment, but I forget what it was, so I'm all set. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Thanks, Ethan. All right. We're down to uh, phone number 802, star star 43. Uh, star 6 to unmute if you have a comment for the board. Please identify yourself. Okay, not hearing anything. I'll move on to 802 star star 50 star six to unmute and identify yourself, please, if you have a comment for the board. Okay, 802 star star 91. Uh, please identify yourself and unmute if you would like to have a comment for the board. Hi, Ethan. It's Caitlin McKinstry. How are you tonight? Caitlin, thank you. Good. Um, so I'm a Stockbridge re resident. I'm pretty sure I just have some comments. Um, I'm very baffled as to why people come on these meetings and say they don't understand why Stockbridge wants to, to unmerge. And Charity's right, yeah, there are some reasons that are individual. She goes to Rutland. Um, for us, where we live, over on 107, Bethel and Barnard are closer to us than Rochester is. It's also a much safer road for us to travel. That's also which way we go for work. Um, but there are a lot of commonalities, and a lot of people don't haven't dug in to really read the documentation and listen to hours upon hours of meetings and listen to all the that the bickerings and the arguings and standing up to people. And it, it really, a lot of it comes down to is the act that was just passed. We weren't able to actually pick a representation for our three spots on the board. Um, our K through six isn't protected. Yes. Our school needs the approval of the town to be shut down, but that doesn't mean the board doesn't hold the power to shift grades. They could make it just a preschool if, if they wanted. Um, and because the Board of Ed only, only protected and made sure that it was K through six through the first year. And with the board that was put there, the panel that was put together with Charity and Tim and Ethan and Justine, they were trying to get our school board to in, be able to involve the public in that decision making. So we could actually choose to keep our school K through six. But board members refused to work with that at all. And now that that board is no longer in existence because the school board didn't want to move forward on majority of their recommendations from my understanding. So this agreement that was made, it's supposed to be a marriage. It's, it's, it's got two parties in it, but we have one party that's a slave to the other. And it's a, the fiscally conservative town is the slave to the other school because they can outvote us. They have more people. And we have just about zero decision-making power. And it seems that the people who stand out are ridiculed, are called names. 
the people who who throw this information out it's it's absolutely ridiculous how people talk about them there's there's threats that have happened there's arguments that happen that that bring in people's character and it's not about that at all and it's just when facts are put out there and unless they're in support of the merger people are being berated and pushed down even by the school board i know the school board has nicknames for people it, it's it's come out it's been talked about through the grapevine and and that's that's why a lot of people won't come out publicly because of that. There are people who refuse to come out publicly because they're afraid it'll affect their business. Like this is a community that we live in. We, we are in this agreement and it's not an agreement. There were promises that were unfulfilled. We have borderline zero decision-making power. And then we have all these Rochester residents come on and are just baffled by why we want to get out of this merger. As if any of our, our, our conversations, our debates, and it doesn't matter how many facts we dig up, doesn't matter how much we present information, doesn't matter how much we source, people are still surprised at why so many people want to get out of this merger. And I agree with an earlier commenter is that whenever something comes up like this, like a vote or polls, it does not, it's never taken for what it is. The last polling you did, Megan brought up that, oh, well, we didn't have a lot of participants. Oh, well, you know, the, this vote, we can have another vote to contest it. When are we going to accept a decision that is made by Stockbridge against the merger as an actual decision? Every decision that we have tried to make is questioned. It's, it's either turned over or it's disregarded. But we're still asked why we want to get out of the merger. So the reasons are immense why Stockbridge should get out of the merger. It's a horrible agreement. It was shoved together in just a matter of weeks. And Stockbridge has no control over anything. The divorce clause isn't even a real divorce clause. Stockbridge still needs Rochester's approval to get out regardless. So I would really encourage those people who claim that they were just so confused over the vote and they they were just had no idea about it. it the information is there. It's out there. I know I found it. I dug. Do you know how many articles I've read? How many hours I've listened to stuff? It it's there. It is there and the vote was held. People got out and talked about it. If people don't know what's going on, I'm not sure how they can be helped or informed unless you take them by the hand and give them every single piece of information. It's time to be adults. There was a vote, there was a result. When is it ever going to be good enough that Stockbridge is unhappy? When is it ever going to be a good enough reason? That's all I have to say. Thank you, Caitlin. <clears throat> star star nine four. Um, star six to unmute. She have a, oh, sorry. We have some comment, Jenny and uh, Megan first, actually, and Jenny. Um, no, my name was brought up and not, not exactly. I'm good, actually. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good. Jenny, you had a comment? Yeah, I guess I have a few, few things going through my mind. Kayla, I'm not sure, um, you know, who you're referring to in terms of board, you know, belittling people or, um, you know, not wanting 
people to agree with us. Um, like I respectfully disagree with that statement. I think that, um, I don't know, I, I think that we are listening and I, I think that we are being respectful. So I'm not sure where that's coming from. I know I personally have been berated on social media for being on the board and it's not easy um, in terms of the the AOA committee and that the board's not doing anything about those things. I would like to point out that there's a couple items on that list that simply, <laughs> they're not legal. There's things on there that we can't legally do. You know, if there's some way around that, then, you know, that would be great. Um, you know, we've gotten legal input on a couple of them and I've sent, you know, Ethan sent around to the board getting, you know, input on those items and I sent it back to him as quickly as I could. And I, um, lastly, I'd like to point out, I know people talk about how Rochester can always outvote Stockbridge, but there's been two votes in the last year, including it this past town meeting day. Stockbridge had more voters on this town meeting day. I forget the actual numbers, but significantly no, more Stockbridge voters than Rochester voters. So yes, Rochester can outvote Stockbridge, but that doesn't mean that all the voters are coming out. Um, that's not what the data says. Stockbridge is town meeting day had significantly more voters than Rochester. Sorry, um, thank you, Jenny. Um, Megan, did you have another comment? Oh, well, Carrie, I'd like to get through, um, I'll, I'll, I'll write you down, but I'd like to get through the rest of the callers if I could um, before we go back. Um, uh, sorry, Caitlin, I believe you were star 9 one 802 star star 9-4. Uh, if you have a comment for the board, star six to unmute. Okay, I'm not seeing any action on nine four. 802 star star nine five. Um, star six to unmute and please identify yourself if you have a comment for the board. Uh, yeah, can... this is Brenda and Harvey Downs. We're just listening. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Brenda. Harvey. Um, all right, uh, Carrie, you had a, a, another comment? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Um, yeah, I just wanted to um, say real quickly that I think we have to keep in mind, um, I know it often goes to Discussion. Um, uh, Carrie, you're getting um, quite quiet. Kind of go towards, you know, finger pointing and, and Rochester did this and Stockbridge did that. And I think we have to keep in mind that um, all of this is fallout from Act 46. And um, none of us have any decisions around um, passing of that legislation. And, and we are all, you know, Doing our, uh, doing our best, and, and, and I think especially our board members are really doing I think, the best job that they can do um, through a very complicated process. And, you know, I think it's totally fair for Stockbridge to um, have, you know, their opinions and Rochester to have their opinions. But I would just encourage us to remember that this was never an ideal situation um, from the get-go. And um, I've been really, you know, pleased with how well our board has come together and how hard they've worked on really big issues. I mean, uh, I know we're still working through the high school building issue, but um, if all things considered, we've, we've made a lot of progress really quickly. Um, so I, I just wanted to say that, that I, I feel like we're all just doing our best here. Um, Megan, did you have a, another comment you wanted? I, I do want to say something because um, I, I, I'm just going to, you know, I'm not sitting here on this board uh, as a proponent of Act 46. Carrie said it exactly. We are all trying to clean up legislation that was very difficult. They haven't been easy choices. And I, I really was very optimistic. And I know that people think that the board, you know, just pushes aside the Articles of Agreement Committee and what we wanted to get, what you guys were working on. 
I, I, I can't have that be the fact, because that's not the fact. We, our agendas have been so packed, and they, they deserve to be discussed, not in a discussion item, in a line of seven discussion items we're going to work on. We need, to take, we need to take time. I think there's still room to improve our articles of agreement. And I hope that we will get that opportunity to work together, because I worry greatly for both of our schools. When I moved here 16 years ago, there was still the Granville School. There was still the Hancock School. Rochester still had a high school and a middle school. And here we are, two of the five Quintown communities with two elementary schools left. If you're not worried about the viability and just working together and being able to share the, the cost and the ability to cooperate, it's, we are missing out on giving our kids education locally in this town and this valley. And I just hope that we can continue these conversations. I think there is more work to do. And I know that People don't think the divorce clause means anything, but the, we discussed the, the five-year period actually during the study committee because we knew three years and we talked about it would be too short. And here we are, and we have not even finished our third year of this merger. So I would just like to hope that we would give it more time because the outcomes are very long-term for a short time. So I just I thank everybody that contributes to the schools, and I thank our administration, and I thank the board for still going at this for so many years of hardship. All right, I think we're done with public comment at this point. Uh, we have hey, Ethan, am I allowed to respond? Um, yeah, sure. Absolutely. I just want to say as a parent of a toddler living in a school district whose future is very unsure, I can tell you a hundred percent, I'm thinking about my daughter and I'm thinking about her education, mm -hmm. which is why I'm participating, which is why I'm pushing for this school so that my daughter isn't going to have to ride the school bus on that road to Rochester every morning and be on there for half hour or so. I'm, I'm doing this to make sure she gets a good education. I'm doing this as a taxpayer who pays majority of our taxes to a school where we don't have very much option. Yes, you want to point out that Stockbridge had more voter participation in the past votes. That's because people aren't super happy with how it's gone. That's why there's that much participation. And I'm also thinking of this as people who have a business in the area. I'm thinking about this as somebody who's, who's wondering if it's a better idea to move to a different school district than to deal with this arguing all the time. So yes, I do think about that. I do think about the education, the arguments of, oh, talk about all the merger, but you don't talk about the education part. As a community, it's our job to look out for our school. And if our school tanks and goes down, it's our decision as parents where to go next. Being forced to condense into one building not having a choice of where our grades are moved, that's not acceptable. It's not acceptable as a parent. It's not acceptable as a taxpayer. Caitlin, Bottom line. Can, I, can I respond to that one point is that we have affirmed, and I know in public session as a mm -hmm. board, that we would not do that ever consolidate class without, without public comment and public involvement. Is that in writing in an agreement somewhere? Um, no, that was not something we put in agreement. Um, you're right. That was one thing we didn't write down, but we have stated it publicly. And it's certainly as chairman, um, it's, uh, I, I would never, I would never make, allow that decision or, you know, support that decision. 
by the board. So that's what happened with the merger. There were promises like that made to Stockbridge that didn't come to fruition. So things like that need to be in writing before they're actually accepted as, as real and truthful. No offense, Ethan, you have done a fabulous job. You have been straight with us, quite frankly. You're from Rochester and you're one of the first people to stand up for Stockbridge. Kudos to you. But due to the history of this agreement, it needs to be in writing. It needs to be an actual legal binding agreement before me and I'm sure several others will accept it as that's how it's going to be because that's what we've been told over several items, several things that, no, that's not actually how it is, even though we were told it was going to be like that. Mm -hmm. Got you. So Thank that's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, Janet Whitaker, I saw you raised your hand. Um, yes, Janet Whitaker, I'm a Stockbridge resident. So I'm speaking on behalf of Stockbridge and I do feel like a lot of people from Stockbridge tonight have spoken against, you know, staying together as a, a merged school. And it does seem like the louder you speak, the more people listen. <laughs> so I couldn't keep my hand down. Um, I felt like Keith Spilecki was badgering the board, and I think that's super unfortunate. The board has to do what the voters choose, no matter the percentages. So that's very disturbing. Um, I understand and respect people's personal choices for wanting school choice, but you know, you keep saying that we have no say. You go to school choice. I'm not sure that you're going to have a whole lot of say either, because you're not going to have you're not going to have this kind of forum to talk on. Um, I go to school every day. I work there. <laughs> Maybe I'm biased, but I agree with um, the comment that it's only three years into the merger. I see a lot of really positive things happening with these kids. Um, even if it is divided and there's kids in Rochester of the upper grades or kids that, you know, in the lower grades, or vice versa, and they have to ride the bus, it's still closer than having to, to get them transported to another school. And there's advantages to having larger classes for fourth grade and all the way through. Um, I just really, I hope that we do get to have a revote. And um, I do hope, I'm sure that people are gonna become more educated because there has been confusion. And one other quick point is, this year has been a very unusual year for voting. I think there was with the pandemic and the way that the, the meeting, the town meeting went last Tuesday, it was harder to understand maybe how to vote. And that's not, you know, that people shouldn't be involved, but people are busy. So I just want to say as a Stockbridge resident, I, I hope we don't unmerge, not at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. All right, I'd say we're done with public comment. Thank you all very much for your comments on this um, very important issue. Uh, I will, uh, uh, having no other business, uh, entertain. Uh, we have a next meeting, it's a regular meeting, I believe, correct? Um, and uh, thank you, Leslie, for your comment. Thanks to the school board for all our time. Um, uh, let's uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. Seconded by Amy. All in favor? Sing five. Aye. 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 Thank you. Good night, Thank all. You. Everybody.